Hello everyone, Rich here. This is a tutorial video, which will hopefully not be too long, on how to install Linux in VMware Player. You've seen me do a lot of videos on different Linux distributions as well as different editions of Windows. You can see I have six, yeah, how many do I have? Yeah, six, six versions of Windows uh, installed right now, but I'm going to start the install process of Zubuntu and I'll explain why I recommend, especially if you've never done this before, uh, Zubuntu. So anyway, let's just uh, hop to it. Now, the first thing is that you have the choice, at least for free stuff, between using VirtualBox or VMware Player. I like VMware Player better because it happens to handle more environments properly. Um, just to go back here for a second, I mainly use VMware Player because it handles MS-DOS environments like the really old stuff. It handles the old stuff as well as the new stuff the same. And I like that VirtualBox doesn't really handle MS-DOS environments very well. It handles new stuff fine. The old stuff, eh, has a little bit of an issue with. But for my retro stuff, I basically need VMware Player. Now, contrary to popular belief, everyone, uh, the, not everything VMware has is paid software. There are free, there is free stuff. Just go to VMware.com, hover over products, see free products here, and VMware Player. You don't need server, just player. If it's only going to be on your computer, you don't need the server edition. So player, and then the blue download button on the next page, another blue download button. Now you are prompted here to make a VMware account. I can say from personal experience that VMware is a reputable company. They will not spam you or send you junk or any of that crap. So you can sign up with confidence, so to speak. And uh, I did, and it's fine. You won't be charged free software free 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 so don't worry about it now after you have the software installed um, I'll show this part in a moment you need to get an ISO of your Linux distro of choice now I, I recommend Zubuntu for the following reasons a it's a Debian release and uh, VMware tools loves Debian Linux and I'll explain that more in a moment secondly it's a light edition of Linux that can install even if you only assign it 64 megs of RAM in the alternate, what they call the alternate install. Um, or you can assign it 256 and it runs fine. And also, Zubuntu does not require any extended, it doesn't require fast video card or any of that jazz. It just installs and runs and works. So when you do the get Zubuntu thing, you can do uh, Lynx or Narwhal, whichever suits you. Now notice right here that I said a moment ago, it says the alternate install CD only requires you to have 64 meg of RAM at install time. You might want to consider that one if you have an older, slower box. Otherwise, just download the regular one, which requires 256, and then just do 1104 United States, and then just do the regular PC Intel x86 desktop CD. I do not recommend using 64-bit for the very simple reason you don't need to for a virtual environment. Because uh, if you were installing this native to the hard drive, sure, if you have a processor capable of supporting a 64-bit environment, go for it. But in a virtual environment, absolutely not necessary. First of all, it's probably true there are no 64-bit apps you need to run for virtual purposes. And secondly, 32-bit doesn't require as much memory as 64-bit does. This is true whether it's Windows or Linux or any other operating system with 32 and 64-bit editions for that matter. So stick to the 32. In the Linux realm, just look for, now you notice when I hover over this, it shows the file name down here. Just look for the ISO that has i386 in it. That essentially means it's a 32-bit release. If you go to the 64-bit, you'll see like AMD 64 or something like that, or uh, X64 sometimes. But look for the one that's I386 or I586. Um, I think I686 is also 32-bit. Could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, so get your ISO. Now, once you have your ISO and you have VMware in Player installed, you go to File and then New Virtual Machine, and you get this. So you choose your installer disk image, just hit the browse button and go to wherever you downloaded your ISO file and 
go for it, and you'll, this is Zubuntu 11.04 desktop dash i386 dot ISO, and it will work. Now you'll notice even though it's Zubuntu, it says Ubuntu detected, that is normal, totally normal. And um, now about VMware tools, which I'll uh, expatiate on a little bit before continuing. VMware player loves Debian Linux especially Ubuntu, Kubuntu, and Zubuntu, because it will install everything automatically. And I'll show that right now, and it's beautiful. Now, the VMware tools is very important to have because that means you can share the clipboard, meaning copying, paste, text, and images, and whatnot, between host and virtual, no problem at all. It also means that you can do a full screen like for example once it's installed you can do a full screen thing and it will look like you're running native Linux inside Windows or vice versa if you decided to install Windows inside Linux and did the full screen thing uh, with VMware tools installed it's a piece of cake it's great so anyway let's go uh, um, you point to your ISO and then you don't need to burn a CD by the way I should note that all you need is the ISO and then next then it asks you to personalize Linux. Now what this does is it automatically uh, puts in, it creates an account for you. So you don't have to go through the process. So I'll just put my full name. You can just put your first name if you want. Username, password, confirm. You do have to put in a username and password. You know, don't leave it blank. And then next. And then you name the uh, machine, which you should change here. Unless it is Ubuntu. I put Zubuntu. 11.04 and then next now it's asking at this point what is the maximum hard drive size now this is actually very important to know because once this is set you really can't change it I mean there are ways to do it but it is not easy so it recommends giving it at least 20 gigs that doesn't mean it's going to take up the full 20 gigs. It will not do that until you personally fill it up. It means that that's the maximum size it will grow to, and then after that, no more. So 20 is fine. Most of you out there have big hard drives anyway. If you don't, you can get away with, at least with Zubuntu, 8. But I would not go any smaller than that. So I'll just stick with the 20. And it asks you if you want to do a single file or multiple files. Single's easier to deal with. Next. Now you can customize the hardware at this point. By default, it will assign it a, a uh, half a gig of RAM, which is okay. Uh, if you want it to be a little speedier, assuming you have the RAM. If you only have a 2 gig RAM system, stick with 512. If you have a 4 gig RAM system, assign it 1 gig. If you have an 8 gig system like I do, you can go you know, all the way up to uh, assign it. It's a 32-bit, remember, so I can give it a maximum of uh, 4,000 meg or 4 uh, gigabyte. But I would assign it 2 gig, and that's fine. I hit OK. So now it's going to be 2,000 megabyte, 2 gigabyte RAM. And the rest of it you can leave as is. It will set up the internet connectivity without a problem, and then you hit Finish. Now, what happens at this point is it is booting at this point and you'll see easy install is installing Ubuntu this is what I mean by how unbelievably simple it is all you have to do at this point is sit and wait you don't have to put in anything you don't have to type in anything after about depending on how fast or slow your computer is probably about 15 to 20 minutes probably less the whole thing will be done and then you just log in with the username and password you gave it a moment ago and that's it like right now, you, you can see it, it's loading, and then it's going to do its thing. Um, this little light right here, it says a CD DVD2. That's the ISO that it's accessing right now. And then in a, I'll wait until it actually shows uh, the install screen. Actually, I'm going to pause the video here, and then I'll show the install screen. Okay, the install screen is coming up now. It doesn't show my full capture window here, but it is doing it. See, it says easy install. It's installing Ubuntu. Let me drag this back down. And then it just verifies. It's a full GUI install. And there are a couple of things. Oh, I, okay. It wasn't exactly true. There are some where I said you don't have to do anything. There are will be a couple of instances where you may have to click uh, a next or 
something like that, but it's nothing where you have to really tell it anything too technical. It's fairly simple. And remember, it's all virtual, so if you screw up, it's not a big deal. You can just try it again. But right now, it's just going completely automatic mode. And by the time it's done, actually, not by the time, when it's done, you start using it. It's that simple. So VMware Player and Zubuntu, if you've never tried it before, give it a shot. It's great.